did physicist Carl Sagan mean when he said, we are star stuff? Well, humans are made of atoms. The top four being oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. Together, they make up 96% of who we are. To understand Sagan's quote, let us look at the atomic composition of the universe first. Amazingly, of all the elements, the gases helium and hydrogen make up a whopping 98% of the ordinary matter in our universe. Where did these two elements come from? They were produced in the hot, dense conditions at the birth of the universe, after the Big Bang, but before stars formed. What about the other 2% that make up all other known elements? These were formed long after the Big Bang. They come from stars. These elements are stardust. What does that mean? Well, let's start at the beginning. The Big Bang is a cosmological model for how the universe started. Hydrogen and helium expanded outward and are 98% of the normal matter in our starry universe. The bang initiated the creation process of the stars and galaxies we see today. Eventually, during expansion, gases coalesced due to gravity and other forces and became the very first stars and galaxies forming 13 billion years ago. The stars forged the elements up to iron. Under tremendous heat and pressures, elements are formed starting by the fusion of hydrogen and helium. Stars shine because of the energy given off by the fusion process. Finally, there are supernovas. A supernova is the luminous remnant of an extremely powerful explosion of a single star or two massive stars colliding. Supernovas are rare events, occurring once every 50 years in our Milky Way galaxy. The Crab Nebula in our galaxy is a supernova remnant. This supernova event occurred in the year 1054 and could be seen with the naked eye during the day for weeks. Ancient astronomers recorded this event around the globe. The heavy elements in our universe likely formed in star collapses, creating the telltale supernova. Elements such as copper, mercury, gold, silver, and lead come from these events. Here's the big picture. The Big Bang created mostly hydrogen and helium. Some stars created elements up to iron and supernova nucleosynthesis created all the heavier elements. Let's focus on one important stardust element, carbon. In living beings, in the air, in the ocean, in the soil, on a finger. Wow. The structure of carbon-12 is six protons and six neutrons forming the nucleus surrounded by six electrons. To understand carbon's formation, we must first understand the alpha particle. An alpha particle is made of two protons and two neutrons. It is a helium atom with no electrons. In stars, helium atoms are abundant. This is good news for humans. The chief recipe for carbon's formation requires three alpha particles to fuse. One, two, Three. During the fusing, starlight energy is given off. Throw in some electrons and carbon pops out of the oven. Physicists call this recipe the triple alpha process. Makes sense since three alpha particles, six protons plus six neutrons, are fused to create one carbon-12 atom plus some energy. This process happens in stars that are about 10 times more massive than our sun. Cambridge-based cosmologist Fred Hoyle coined the term Big Bang. He also uncovered the triple alpha process for carbon's formation in 1953. Hoyle predicted certain specific properties of carbon that must exist for its formation. This was a leap of genius. He gave us the understanding of how carbon is created in stars. Excluding hydrogen and helium, the major elements in stars Carbon is 16% of the mass of our universe. Next, let's view a simulated demo of the triple alpha process. 
We will see how the three alphas fuse to create carbon in the most unlikely of circumstances. This is a simulator of the triple alpha process for carbon 12's formation. This device will demonstrate how the triple alpha process works to create carbon. First, let's look at the individual pieces. Then we'll run a simulation of carbon's creation in action. Note that during the process, packets of energetic photons, gamma rays, are emitted along the way. They too are crucial to carbon's formation, but are not shown in the simplified demo. First, there are the two alpha particles. Each is the nucleus of a helium atom, or said another way, a helium atom without its two electrons. Alpha particle one, two flashing protons, two flashing neutrons. Here's alpha particle two. Now, if these collide, they create a brillium-8 nucleus with four protons and four uh, neutrons. Observe carefully, the beryllium nucleus will quickly decay. What happened to the ephemeral beryllium-8 nucleus? It was there. Well, it normally exists for less than a millionth of a millionth of a second before collapsing back to two alpha particles. It's extremely unstable. Let's look at that again. This is the typical life of beryllium, gone in an instant, but sometimes Sometimes, during beryllium's brief life, it meets a partner. Let's freeze the beryllium nucleus on for now. If alpha-3 collides with it, a unique state of carbon-12 is formed, packed with an extra bundle of energy. The carbon nuclei is in what is called an excited Hoyle state. This state was predicted by astronomer Fred Hoyle. This fickle atom has little chance of survival. The Hoyle state nuclei almost always decays back to beryllium and an alpha particle. However, for every 2,500 of these energized carbon nuclei, just one gives off a photon burst of energy to create stable carbon. We have a stable carbon nucleus after this amazing process completes. Not shown here is the simple addition of six free electrons to complete the carbon atom's formation. That's the easy part. Now that we have a better appreciation for the pieces of this drama, let's see the full sequence in action from left to right. Start with the two alpha particles. The two alpha particles collide. We see the collision. They form unstable beryllium. Now, if by chance alpha-3 collides, a carbon nucleus is created. We get stable carbon. Our life depends on this amazing chain reaction occurring in stars. The creation of carbon is dependent on many steps, and certain physical constants must have precise values. Amazingly, this house of cards stays together, and carbon is abundant on our Earth because of it. Let's see this process again. So we see the importance of the alpha particle in carbon's creation. It is also responsible for the direct formation of 11 other elements. The single alpha process is likely responsible for forming each of the elements from oxygen to nickel. Using this ladder or wheel as a guide, we see that carbon is a starter element. There are 11 alphas sitting in an illustrated reservoir in the center. One is used to create oxygen. This is made from carbon fusing with one alpha particle. The superscript number 16 for oxygen is the total number of protons plus neutrons. We could say that carbon is the father of oxygen. Fuse another alpha particle with oxygen, and we get neon. And so on up until the chain stops. It takes 11 alpha particles to make these 11 elements. So nickel is a descendant of carbon 11 generations later. Now think of the elements in the periodic table as one large interconnected family. 
Carbon is a crown jewel in the periodic table of the elements. Speaking of the triple alpha process, Stephen Hawking said, Calculations show that a change of as little as 0.5% in the strength of the strong nuclear force, or 4% in the electric force, would destroy either nearly all carbon or all oxygen in every star, and hence the possibility of life as we know it. So our existence is dependent on many fine-tuned parameters and change of interconnected reactions. The stars in our universe are responsible for the creation of 98 chemical elements and especially carbon. We don't exist without the countless galaxies forming the raw chemical elements of life. Now we can better appreciate Carl Sagan's poem, We Are Star Stuff, Harvesting Sunlight. Thank you.